I want to expand our conversation about what we we witnessed uh, this week and sort of the 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 clarity uh, in which the Trump, um, in many respects, ethnic cleansing may be a slightly strong word, but I don't think it's too strong of a word. Um, but um, families belong together dot org is where people are um, uh, going online. Uh, to get more information about protests that will continue to take place on um, on June 30th of this month. FamiliesBelongTogether.org. FamiliesBelongTogether.org. And um, there are going to be massive protests. We saw earlier this week where uh, the head of the uh, Department uh, of Homeland Security was heckled at a Mexican restaurant. I mean, one has to wonder what 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 she was thinking about uh, going uh, to uh, a Mexican restaurant in, in the midst of all this. And we saw uh, more protests out in front of uh, the uh, of Trump uh, properties and and whatnot. And it it is really awoken people. Um, and you know, some other things happened this week that I think are also indicative, and I know you've written about this, about the sort of the broader project that's going on with the, that immigration, um, the assault on immigrants is, is simply a part of. Uh, a, a judge, a, a federal judge earlier this week, I think it was on Monday, ruled that uh, Kansas, the, the Kansas state proof of citizenship voter registration requirement was a violation of the Constitution as well as the National Voter Registration Act. And uh, this was uh, Chris Kobach's uh, baby, if you will, the uh, Kansas Secretary of State. Uh, Not only did Kobach lose the case, but was actually admonished by the federal judge uh, and basically told, "Take take a law class. Uh, as a lawyer, you're you're subpar in the way that you um, uh, you, you comply with the court's orders, the way that you um, you have had violations of discovery and disclosure rules, et cetera, et cetera. And so um, this uh, this is indicative of a of a, a broader conservative project that I know you've you've written about. Well, yeah. I mean, I think that, you know, when you kind of step back from this whole immigrant, you know, this, which seems rather sudden. I mean, let, let's just put it this way. We've had, you know, there's been a nativism in America going all the way back to the beginning, right? I mean, there was a time when they were upset that the Germans were, were emigrating <laughs> to the United States, you know, way back in the early 1800s. And, you know, we've seen waves and waves of, of nativist feeling over the course of our history, but we are a, a an immigrant country, and we have always had immigrants coming in. And, you know, there's always been a, a political dimension to that, which was, you know, in the big cities and, you know, back during Tammany Hall and whatever, they would organize the Irish immigrants, right, to vote for the... for, for you know, one faction or the other. I mean, this was a big part of, of how that, you know, America was formed. It's part of who we are. And, and so immigration is a political issue. For the Republicans, what's happened to them, I mean, this is a very big problem for them because uh, what's happened is they've become a white party. I mean, essentially, that is just nothing but white people, and that is a shrinking uh, portion of the American public. Still very big, obviously, mostly, you know, we're a lot of white people in this country, but it's getting smaller. And there are plenty of white people who don't, you know, subscribe to the conservative ideology as well people like you and me right i mean we're white and we're we're liberals and we don't you know we don't go along with any of this so we we actually form a coalition with the emerging you know demographics of of you know there are african americans and there are asians and there were people you know there are people from the middle east and obviously a very large faction of 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 uh, latinos and, you know, this is, you know, Latinos have been here forever, by the way. I just want to point out to everybody, you know, I live in a place called Santa Monica. There's a reason for that. <laughs> this is a, you know, the, the Southwest has, you know, from Texas all the way to California. I mean, there are a lot of Hispanic, uh, there's a lot of Hispanic culture here. It's perfectly normal. It is who we are. It's as American as apple pie. Okay. I mean, that's just the way it is. But, 
you know, this, this is being ginned up because what happened was they did an experiment where they, they thought for a while that they could attract Latinos to the Republican coalition. George W. Bush famously did his yeah. compassionate conservative outreach. At some point, it became clear to the conservative movement people that their white people were not going to, didn't want to be in a party with a bunch of, you know, people who weren't white. And the, the only answer to that was to go back to their old ways of vote suppression, uh, claiming vote, voter fraud, uh, doing things like poll tests that they used to do in the Jim Crow South, and trying to suppress any kind of immigration from the, what Donald Trump calls whole countries, right? Keep all those people out. Uh, expel as many of them as you can, and for the ones that are here, suppress their vote, make it difficult for them to vote, make it so that they, you know, are afraid to vote. That is, they, they recognized that in order to appease their white party, they had to do that, and the only answer is because this is a growing demographic, you know, they, they have kids, they're, at some point or another, the you know, the white population is going to be a minority in this country right. and and that's and that's not very far away i mean you know it's within the next 20 years that that's going to happen so that is their project here and that's a long-term thing from the conservative movement that isn't donald trump i mean donald trump he he is very tuned in to the racial prejudice and the bigotry and the xenophobia of that of that white group and he knows how to play it he's a demagogue he's very very he's very very talented at that particular thing but underlying that is a long-term project from people like, you know, Richard Vigory and, and, you know, the conservative movement people who've been working very hard. Laura Ingram is a good example, you know, yes. on Fox News. You know, there are activists there who've been, who saw this coming and, and created an entire, you know, sub-movement within the conservative movement to deal with immigration. And that is, that is the long-term goal of those people, and they're, they, you know, Trump is their tool. It's not the other way around. Trump is who they're using to get there. He is, you know, he's more than they could have dreamed, right, because, you know, he's just, he's out there just basically ginning up a, a, a race war. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, they are going step by step, and these are very patient people, by the way. They wait decades to get what they want. And, uh, you know, I think it, it behooves those of us on the other side of this, as you said earlier, you know, for, for Democrats and, and um, liberals and progressives to come up with some uh, a new way of talking about and dealing with immigration in this country, because they're not going to give up whether Donald Trump is defeated or not. This is this is it is a matter of survival to them. And 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 we should say that the you know this is we're we're seeing their assaults on the sort of the the broader uh, just immigrant uh, communities and um, and that is you know the sort of the tell here that it's not simply about the rule of law and um, you know when you see people who are in this country legally um, these doors are shut on them whether they're here because of. Uh, you know, an earthquake in, in Haiti or uh, a civil war somewhere, and we're, we're not letting in legal um, right. uh, immigrants. Um, that, is the, that is the big tell. That, um, well, they're the, talking now about rescinding citizenship on yep. people that, you know, people who are, you know, who have gained citizenship perfectly legally. <laughs> they are Americans. And, and in our history, I mean, that is a very unusual step. That's not something that we, even in our worst nativist moments, we, we didn't do that in this country. Once you were an American, you're an American, right? I mean, that's a permanent state. Uh, the um, only way that they ever, ever, you know, rescinded people's citizenship was but like finding out that you were a Nazi or something. Exactly. You know, I mean, really, Some type war of, criminals. Uh, yeah, espionage. All right, yeah. we've got to take a quick break. We come back, um, we'll uh, wrap up this conversation, also talk about... Um, uh, some of the uh, investigations are going on, some of the figures uh, like Michael Cohen and Paul Manafort, and also uh, maybe Wilbur Ross will join them uh, in the docket. we got to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Sam Cedar, Ring of Fire Radio.